Good morning, this is Mr. Martin sharing with you this year's story. I'm going to share with you a story that I've shared before uh, with other students in other schools. Um, a story that I love because it's about many times we hear that um, teachers touch lives of students, but we don't often hear how much or to what extent the students touch the teacher's life. So this is a story of a student that touched my life. Um, this is a story from Argentina and the name of the main character of the story is Tommy Murphy. So let me introduce you to Tommy Murphy. You know, what is interesting about this story is that I had uh, in my own school a student with his name, Tommy Murphy, um, a Scottish name. He was such a bad student. He was such a slacker, you know. <laughs> it was so hard to make him work. And this happened when I was working with international, not international, uh, regional uh, maths Olympiads. I had a club, a mathematics club in my school where I used to work when I was young. This is in my 20s. Um, and, and we had a a maths team, and, and I was correcting uh, some um, tests for other schools for the Olympiads, the regional, the first, the first stage in the uh, Mathematics Olympiads is uh, for a certain region, so this was in the same area, but this Thomas Murphy came from another school. I just read his name on a paper, and I thought, wow, same name as my student, but this one is good in maths. So it, ca it caught my attention. So how did I meet him? I, I first met him when we were doing um, Maths Olympiad. I saw a paper. I remember the problem. This happened maybe, I don't know, 30 years ago. But I still remember the problem. Uh, it was about two boats starting from one point and moving in um, different directions at different speeds and the angle in between the boats was 50 degrees and after a certain time therefore you knew the distances that the boats had traveled because you knew the speed they had to find out the distance that separate these two boats for my students this was an easy an easy question because i taught them the sine rule and the cosine rule right both of these rules that work for non-rectangle triangles. They knew it, so they just applied the law, and in two minutes they solved it. But Thomas didn't do, did not, I mean, he came from a, probably a school that was not very strong in mathematics. Uh, he didn't have all this background um, on IGCSE. This, this is at the age of 15. He was the same age as you are now. So he wasn't introduced to these two very useful rules, but somehow transforming this into tr rectangle triangles using Pythagoras and Sokatoa, I don't know, I can't remember exactly, he derived the rule and he got the answer right. So I was, I was puzzled, I thought, okay, this is, a, this is a brilliant mind, and he has the same name as my student, he lives close to my school where I work, and I knew a teacher that worked in the same school where Thomas was a student. So I asked the teacher, do you know Thomas Murphy? And she said, oh, yes, he's a wonderful kid. He just lost his father a few months back ago. Uh, so he's a beautiful, beautiful human being. And, and I told him, well, he's very good in math, you know. I would like to know him. I would like to meet him. Do you think I could invite him to, to my lessons and have him in class? And she said, yeah, let, I'll let him know, see if he's willing to come. And then I went and talked to the headmaster of my school, Mr. John Byward, a kind soul. He said, yeah, of course, bring him. You don't have, we don't have to charge him. Just bring him to your club, let him interact with our students. Uh, this would probably uh, improve the, um, the level of the maths in, in, in the environment of our school because it is clear that this student has great talents. So we invited him and we met him. This is, this is Thomas probably 
uh, a couple of years before he graduated. This is his mother, Nike. As you will hear uh, from him, he's, her mother is, um, his mother is um, a doctor, a medical doctor, that when his father, Carlos, died, his father was a surgeon, uh, and he died from a brain tumor. Uh, she was left to raise Thomas and his three other siblings, or two other siblings. I can't remember if it's three or two. Um, and she did a great job. I never met her, his mother. Uh, but I met Tommy more or less when he was in grade 10, probably, and invited him to class. I said, you know, we do our lessons in English. Is, is that a problem with you? And he said, no, no, no. I, 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 my father wanted me to learn English, so I'm going to honor my father by learning maths in English. So together we did IGCSE, AS Maths, and Olympiads. He came to school twice a week or three times a week, joined our lessons like any other student. He had a ponytail like I have now. Just to honor Thomas, I, I, <laughs> I have this ponytail. And, and he, he was a different person in the class because he was, you know, he was absorbing everything. He was desperate to learn. And that was a great example for, for my students. So it was an honor to have him in class. And of course, he went through all the levels and got the highest grades in AS Maths and, and reached the finals in the Olympiads. Him and a couple of other students from my school, they reached the finals a couple of consecutive years in, in the National Maths Olympiads. And when they came out of the finals one day, uh, the University of St. Andrews offered them a scholarship. 50%, University of St. Andrews in Argentina, a very expensive university. But Thomas said, well, I don't know how I will afford the other 50%, but I'll take it. So this is the attitude. A man or a student in those days, a boy, that was always paying attention to the opportunities that opened in front of him. He was not asleep or daydreaming or thinking about the future. He was in the present moment. This is something that I realized. He said, yeah, yeah, I'll take this. Of course, I'll take every opportunity. So he, he moved on to the University of St. Andrews. And, and then I, I lost track of him for many years because I left the country. I heard about him from his friends at school that he was doing incredibly well. He communicated with me probably, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I heard that he was doing all these kinds of things that you can see here. I, I, I just recently um, told him that I was um, going to speak about him. So he said, can you share some pictures and some uh, your CV, some of your achievements? And he said, yeah, well, my CV is quite dry. I'm going to go through your through Tommy's uh, curriculum, but as you can see, he has a PhD in economics from the University of Oxford, masters from the University of Oxford, masters from Darwin College, uh, MA in economics in St Andrews University, and if you keep on exploring his curriculum, he's such a brilliant mind. You know, last time I heard from him, he was. He was a teacher in the University of Milan. He published so many things, so many papers. Uh, you can see consultant uh, for different countries in the world, for the University of Milan, for different universities. If I scroll through the, through the uh, curriculum of this young man, well, one can only feel admiration for him, prizes, awards languages. He started only with Spanish and now he has a fluent English, of course, Italian because he lived in Italy and learned to speak very good Italian, French, Portuguese. So how did he get here? How did Tommy make his success, his life so su successful? It is, it is because of his um, mind being present. Uh, aware of what is happening and most of all 
feeling grateful for the opportunities that opened in front of him. So this is how I met him when he was 15. He was full of gratitude because he thought I was being kind with him and I thought he was being kind with me because he was improving the quality of my lessons by putting his brain into my math lessons. But we, have, we had this uh, shared experience. We went together to explore for many years after, even after he finished high school and he was in the university, um, I heard that he got the other 50% of the scholarship in college by, by, teaching, um, by teaching younger students maths. So he was using all these talents early in life to earn his career. And he was very generous with his knowledge. He, he would come with us to the prisons to share, you know, the maths Olympiads uh, in, encounters that we had in prison. He would come and spend time with us in the prisons. He was very, very kind, and, and it was a pleasure always to see him until we left. We, we, we left because I, I, I would travel to another country to work and teach, and, and he traveled to England to do his PhDs in, in the University of Oxford, and I think also St. Andrews in Scotland. So when you look back and, and you join the dots and you wonder, okay, how did Tommy get there? It's quite clear you are never aware of what's going to happen in the future, but if you are in the present moment, if you're paying attention to what's happening, you might probably end up looking back and understanding how you got there. So this is Tommy with his now wife. In those days, this was his girlfriend. Beautiful story of love also. They, they studied together at St. Andrews University in Buenos Aires and then she went with him all around the world. And now, recently, he decided to go back into one of the worst economies in the world, one of the <clears throat> countries that is struggling more, but going back to the university that gave him the opening to, the doors open to the world from the University of St. Andrews. He's now teaching there. Um, you can see he has um, a master's there. He's in charge of a master's in economics in the University of St. Andrews. And he, he went back there because his wife missed his, her family. And he thought, uh, I'll follow my heart, no longer my heart. She followed him. Now she follows her back to Argentina. This is another graduation ceremony probably in Oxford where Thomas here is getting his PhD. And something really, really lovely is when he published his thesis, which he shared with me recently. He published his thesis and I said, and I said, Tommy, I want to speak to my students about you and how much you have inspired me as a teacher. And he said, well, have a look at the acknowledgments in the thesis. So when I start looking at the acknowledgment, of course, he acknowledges his, uh, parents, right? I'm going to follow here the reading. Now, my family, in fact, it's quite small. Yeah. But throughout my life, life uh, love and support was never missing from my parents, Carle, Carlos and Nike. My siblings, Barbara, Sheila, and Patricio, three siblings, my grandma, Chola, um, uncle, aunt, Diego and Silvia, so he's acknowledging his parents, right? Both of my parents were always great believers in the value of education, and they never spared any effort to make sure my siblings and I had the tools and opportunities we needed to achieve whatever goal we wanted to reach. It is then, with my greatest sadness, that I reached the culmination of this intellectual enterprise without the company of my dad who was taken away from my side when I had not even finished high school. More than any other person I have ever met, he cherished the search of knowledge. He was perhaps, it was perhaps the very attitude that transformed a humble merchant's son, mechanic's son like him, into a well-respected neurosurgeon. And I guess a wicked sense of irony dictated that he would be killed at the early age of 43 years old by the same kind of brain tumor that he regularly extirpated from his innumerable patients. The image I kept of him 
is that some sort of unreachable intellectual superhero. Although by now I know that might be well be rather embellished impression of the impressionable teenager I was back then. And in fact, I would have given everything to see him turn into a regular man as I was growing up. That image was indelibly marked in my heart and have set a model that more or less consciously I systematically tried to emulate. How, after the tragedy of his death, my mum managed to keep the normal functioning of our home while having at the same time a full-time profession <clears throat> as a medical doctor is still a mystery to me. With a considerable share of sacrifice, she made my siblings and me feel like nothing more than a terrible emotional shock had happened, carrying on with our education, making sure we had always access to everything we needed and giving us unconditional and constant love. <clears throat> she is and will ever be an example of strength and perseverance to follow. I owe both of my parents a good part of what I am today. A beautiful recognition that I think many of you can <clears throat> sign. And then following with a reading, or maybe a page before that, I found this, uh, I'm going to highlight it because this is one of the highlights of my life. <clears throat> I want, so he's recognizing his teachers, right? Of course, not all of the teachers I had deserve all this credit. Some were indeed terrible. But many were not. And they were enough to make an impact on me. And they were enough dedicated to make me believe the teaching profession is a noble one. So he became a teacher. Naming all of them would be certainly impossible, but they do have my deepest gratitude. I want to nevertheless give a special thanks to three of them. And here is Martin Suarez, a high school teacher from St. Albans College. Perhaps not knowingly, out of pure kindness, opened so many doors to me. So this is Thomas now as a teacher saying goodbye to his students in the University of Milan in Italy. This was a surprise farewell from his students. So what is this story about? The story is about that connection between a teacher and a student that goes from the heart to the heart. <clears throat> so when you teach, you touch a life, but many, many, many lives touch your heart. Thank you very much. <clears throat>